Good evening, uh, everyone, or good morning for the folks in the U.S. Uh, welcome. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, JetBrains uh, team for inviting me. Uh, it's going to be a pleasure because basically I started uh, using JetBrains about a month ago. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was a full experience for me. Uh, but we're just, uh, today's session is all about quality assurance, and quality assurance is crossing even IDEs. So the goal for today would be uh, we improve quality assurance on your PHP projects, and by doing so, you deliver higher quality of your applications, and you become more familiarized with the available tools. In the end, uh, it's you that need to step through that door that I'm opening up for you guys. So, why quality assurance? Well, first of all, quality assurance is all about safeguarding code. Uh, you want to make sure that the code that you created um, a week ago um, is not broken uh, as you move along with uh, new improvements or new development. Um, by doing so, you also want to detect bugs early because nothing is as frustrated uh, when you have a bug displayed uh, to your customers or to uh, whoever asks you to do this project. By using the correct tools, you can also observe behavior, see how well your uh, application is performing, uh, how your application is growing, and also how your application is going to be used. And in the end, you want to prevent accidents from happening. And by doing so, you track the progress of your application. So that was my very short introduction, but I think it's time to get our hands dirty. I think the first and foremost uh, tool that you will use in software application development is revision control. And when I say revision control, I don't mean FTP. One of the advantages of using a proper SEM, uh, like Git or a Subversion or um, what's it called, um, CVS for crying out loud, uh, it allows you to develop in a team. Um, every developer creates code and that code is uh, stored in a repository. Another developer uh, modifies some code that's merged into that uh, same repository in such a way that it doesn't override each other's de development. You also track multiple versions of that same source code. And by doing so, you can move back and forth in history. And that allows you to say, okay, at this point, we reach a milestone and you tag it, for instance, during a release. One of the benefits that you have by using an SEM is it also is a backup of your source code. So in the case that your development laptop gets stolen, uh, no worries. All you have to do is check out uh, the repository and you're good to go. Using an SEM, um, most of the time you use it from command line. Uh, there are some native apps that you can download for your uh, operating system like uh, Tertoise SVN or um, even the GitHub uh, client, you can install it immediately on your desktop. But um, most likely you will use the IDE that you uh, use to create uh, the source code and in this case it will be the JetBrains IDE PHP Storm. And with all the tools available there are some an analytical tools that will consume uh, all commits from your SCM and keep track of issues and attach your commits for that particular issue to that uh, tracking system or something like that. One of the benefits, and this is why I highlighted it especially, it, it provides hooks for tools. So whenever you commit something, you can have other events attached to that but we'll get to uh, those hooks later. First and foremost, 
you have PHP lens. That's the built-in tool that you will use for uh, checking syntax. It's provided with PHP, and it's on the command line, and you can run it immediately to verify if a file is syntax, uh, syntaxly uh, correct. Uh, you use this per file, um, like we already stated. If you have a proper SEM, you can have it as a pre-commit hook. So uh, whenever you uh, submit something that's broken, uh, the uh, SEM will reject your commit and will notify you about the failure. So how do you run it on command line? Very simple. Uh, you have uh, a loop, you iterate over some files, you pass it uh, to PHP uh, minus LF, and it will say, hey, there is an error. Uh, you I either expect a comma or a semicolon in the PHP test file. But like I said, it's also easy to put it as an SEM hook. So um, broken code does not enter your system. This is a simple example. Uh, no worries, the, the slides will be available, the source code will be available, so no need to write everything down at this point. So when I have my file, I have a look here, and as you can see, line 7, I have forgotten a semicolon. So let's check it again. Yes, it triggers an error, but I'm stubborn and I want to commit it to subversion anyway. So I add it to subversion and commit it because I want to go home. It's after office hours and I don't want to wait any longer. So I'm committing. And here's my commit. Sorry, your file is not entering this repository. It's a pre-commit hook that says you have a syntax error. So this is your first line of defense. Uh, it's easily implemented. And we all know when times are a little bit stressy, we tend to forget things. and a comma, a semicolon, uh, we forgot a curly brace. Uh, those things happen, and by implementing this right in your repository, you prevent uh, bad code entering your, uh, your system. But of course, PHP Storm has it already built in, so as you go along and type your, your process, um, it will automatically detect mistakes. So if you watch the, the green block in the right hand corner, it turns red whenever you have unfinished code. So I can type and it will automatically say you're not finished yet. It has some advantages. You can inject language and replace quotes, but this is the most important one what's expected, a semicolon. So by just hovering over the right-hand bar, you will immediately see, hey, I'm missing something here. So that's, that's pretty nifty. But then we go to the next step. We need to have some documentation. Um, everyone writes codes, but also provides doc blocks on top of their code, right? The question I always get, why should we document? Well, first of all, when you have new members on the team and you want to explain some functionality, uh, it's easy to just grab a printout or use a big screen and point out uh, the references. Um, when you're working with remote workers, that's even more important you might want to do some uh, analysis on improvements of the code. 
And one of the benefits that I feel is that and by putting in the dog box, you also think before you actually start doing it. And you, the dog box are being used by uh, most IDEs and editors for code hinting. So whenever you start typing a function, it all automatically tries to read the dog box and say, hey, these are the parameters that you need to fill out for this method or this function. Um, I've become a fan of PHP Documenter 2, uh, which is uh, a very slick application, runs very fast, um, comes with a fresh uh, interface, and you can put it on uh, your internal server for everyone to access. So if you want to look at some class details, you can immediately see, hey, uh, these are uh, the constructors, these are the properties, these are the methods, and so on and so on. So, how do you do this? Well, you need to write dog block. Okay, it, it becomes a little bit uh, extra work that you need to do, but the benefits are enormous. Uh, first of all, like I said, you have the automatic hinting in your IDE. Um, it gives also a good reference to other users, to other people, uh, to know exactly what kind of parameters, what kind of uh, properties you have, what, what is the return value of this uh, method, and so on and so on. And one of the nice uh, benefits of using PHP uh, Documenter 2 is it also creates like a class graph. So you can see, oh, um, this um, class is extended from this class. So you have the full hierarchy of uh, class which is pretty nifty if you want to see, okay, how many levels uh, are we depending on base classes and so on. All right, next step after we've done some documentation is also a very important debugging. So debugging is what we call the art of finding a bug and it allows you to walk step by step through your code base until you reach the point of failure. Um, I like to use the uh, xdebug uh, extension in PHP because it allows me to just um, implement it. I use it also for PHP unit uh, to give me nice uh, uh, additional information about my unit test, but also uh, with these settings, I can use it in uh, my, my IDE, which is PHP Storm. So, how do I run it? Well, I have my application. Uh, so, okay, there is a problem here. And I need to uh, go through it. Okay. I put a uh, break in, on this file and I start listening to my uh, debugger. So I go to my web page and I provide a debug session start. And it automatically jumps back to PHP Storm. And it stops immediately at that line. Hang on a second. Now I need to post my form. So I provide it with some parameters. And there you go. So it automatically jumps to my application. Um, I can provide watches, I can verify the variables, I can see the whole stack of, app, um, of classes that have been used, I can step over items, I can step into items, uh, I can also force a step into, and so I can immediately start looking at, okay, where is my, my problem, which is pretty nifty. 
so my form is not valid. So what happens then? So it's it's pretty okay. So we have a problem with the populate function. So we need to look there. But anyway, it it's pretty easy to connect your uh, PHP storm with uh, your uh, application and step through your uh, code base to figure out okay what what the hell is going on. But debugging is one step. I think the most important part is testing your application. And um, I've heard many excuses why people cannot run the tests. There is no time. It's not within budget. The de development team does not know how. The tests are being provided after delivery. And we all know it's never going to happen. And so on and so on. I mean, I, I'm sure you can think of other excuses as well. But in reality, there is no excuse. Um, first of all, there are some benefits of uh, running some unit tests. Uh, you get better code with smaller footprints. Um, it allows refactoring uh, very easily because you know, OK, I still need to keep my uh, API intact. Um, and, and your test will, will make sure that you don't break uh, backwards compatibility. Um, again, detecting bugs in an early stage and um, when you have to maintain your applications, it really, really saves a lot of time. So how do you get started? Um, well, the most, most difficult part is uh, get your applications uh, set up uh, with PHP unit. All you need to provide is Hey, I've got this uh, test suite, and you give it a name, unit test suite, or my application test suite, whatever. And uh, you have some directories that you want to filter. And so only use these directories uh, with the suffix PHP. Make sure that it only looks at the extension PHP for running the unit test. Since we're using most likely a framework, you will need to bootstrap your application. I'm using Zen Framework, but a similar approach also counts for um, Symfony, for Silex, uh, for uh, Agave, for whatever kind of framework that you're using. Um, also make sure that you have e all and e strict on. Don't forget your uh, de default time zone. Um, that's very important. And bootstrap your application. And that's it. Uh, most of the time, you can use the bootstrapper of the proper application. Uh, and it should work automatically. So, writing tests is the next thing that you need to do. So, consider a, a class comment. So, you have an ID, full name, email address, website, and a comment. Uh, well, you know the drill. Writing a test is very sim simple. You have an application model, in this case, common test. So I pr try to use the same naming convention for my test as I would do for my classes. Um, so I immediately see, oh, this test is for this particular class. Um, you can also use um, application one test application to test and so on, but you only make life a whole lot more difficult for yourself and for others. Um, so what do I do in this case? Uh, well, I create a new comment object. Uh, I put it in a property that's available for all my applications. Um, so I first test my model as empty at constructs. Uh, and this is just a very simple example of a, a unit test. Um, of course, we need to have a class uh, to test against. So this is a very uh, 
yeah, uh, compressed class, um, no uh, indentation whatsoever. Uh, so, uh, like I said, the, the files will be available at the end of the slide deck. So, uh, no way to if you cannot follow along in the code base. Uh, well, writing the class is one thing, but of course we need to add some validation. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so we have uh, validators uh, that we provide, and then we uh, have to modify our setters and getters uh, to use those validators. Uh, so our class is immediately protected uh, using proper validation. Um, also for email addresses, websites, and of course the comments. And when you run your tests, it's uh, yeah, it's running uh, perfectly. Um, in PHP Storm, same thing. You don't have to use a terminal to run your unit test. You can just run your configuration. Uh, just make sure that you use the configuration PHP unit XML that you created. Uh, like I said, uh, I can show you. So you have your test PHP unit XML. Go. And that's it. And from that point on, all you have to do is to run your test. It will pop up. There you go. So you can immediately see what test succeeded, what kind of data set it uses. Um, I'm using uh, data providers uh, so I can um, add some uh, additional data uh, to the test in case uh, there is an edge case uh, of which I haven't think, uh, thought of that I can immediately implement there. So, uh, using uh, the, the unit test runner in, in PHP Storm made it a whole lot easier for me to overview, okay, what kind of test uh, succeeded, what kind of test failed, because otherwise you just have the dots and, and the green bar. Okay, the green is still a warm, fuzzy feeling, but uh, seeing this uh, run uh, makes your heart beat even faster. Well, with the unit tests, you have covered most of the uh, yeah, the wrong things that can happen in your applications. But um, there's another thing that you need to think of that is called mass detection. Uh, basically, what it tries to do is try to identify code smells, um, bad coding um, that might become bugs sooner or later, uh, suboptimal codes that you used, uh, maybe some deprecated functions, uh, overcomplicated expressions, unused par parameters, methods, properties. Um, I see it a lot where uh, I see a variable being uh, instantiated but never being used. So why do you use it? Wrongly named parameters. Uh, Stuff one, stuff two, stuff three. I don't call that parameters. Uh, those are yeah, tryouts. Uh, also, if you have uh, comments uh, or parts of code in comments and it remains in your code base, get rid of it. You don't want to have it in there. Um, again, you can run it on command line. Um, it gives you a, a quick list of what's failing. But the nice thing is, is that you can also run it in PHP Storm. So you say, okay, I have my library here, and inspect the code, and you can say, okay, I want to do some PHP mass detection violation. So it follows some standard guidelines. It will uh, analyze your code and gives you some nice feedback. So you can immediately click through and start fixing them. So here I have an unused local variable test. 
So let's have a look at what's happening there. Um, it's because uh, we used a uh, regular expression. We need to fix this. So using it now in PHP Storm um, allows me to, to quickly uh, detect what's, uh, what's smelly code. I see it uh, in detail. I click on the link. It brings me directly to uh, the point where I need to fix it. I can fix it and continue with the next one. So, yeah, that really, really saves me a lot of time. Um, we talked about uh, several uh, tools, uh, and of course, you can run it automatic, uh, well, manually. But the goal is to have it. Um, in some sort of automation. And because, well, let's be honest, computers are great at doing repetitive tasks very well. So uh, all the tools that we described and that you saw run manually, we should automate this. Uh, because we want to limit the risk of human error. Um, it will always be executed in the same order. Uh, and it will always run uh, the same way for every developer on your team. Uh, it allows also to fine-tune and improve features. So if you say, okay, we need to have a new library uh, under uh, code smell inspection, or we need to unit test groups of uh, uh, code bases, uh, you can modify the automation tool, and it will be immediately available for everyone on your team. Um, there is a whole discussion regarding, okay, what tool should you use? I prefer to use uh, Thing. Um, it's written in PHP. Um, the project lead is a Dutch guy. And, I mean, if you use ANTS, sorry, um, yeah, this uh, webinar will focus on Thing, but the instructions will be similar to ANTS. Um, so you will be still be able to follow along. Um, well, the goal is to have uh, all the tools run automatically. So again, uh, you can run it uh, in command line. So execute the ping PHP unit. We'll do the same thing as you would do uh, PHP unit on command line. And you can say, okay, I want to execute all items that I've uh, specified. So code sniffing and uh, copy paste detection, PHP unit, all that stuff. But since we're already developing in our uh, IDE, why not add it um, at our build file as a thing item? So you have your PHP doc, PHP lens, you run it. There you go. It's finished immediately. And you can also say, OK, let's run the complete build and, and be done for. So I have to admit that uh, using this IDE, um, made me go less to my command line, which I normally did, and, and start using the ID more as my command center, uh, where I can uh, write my code, document my code, run the inspections, run my unit test, and all in an automated fashion. So in summary, uh, what we've seen is SEM. Uh, subversion git, PHP lens uh, for syntax checking, uh, PHP documenter uh, for document generation, debugging, which is pretty powerful with uh, PHP Storm, unit testing, mess detection, ping automation. So, yeah, I have to admit, PHP Storm really shook my world. And um, like I stated at the beginning of this uh, webinar, and I only used it for a month, so once I get more 
familiarized with uh, HP Storm, I will be able to do even more things in an automated fashion and become better doing my job as a HP developer. Um, in short, quality assurance is part of a development process. Uh, uh, you as a developer, you have a responsibility and also some honor in the work that you deliver. And by starting off with the proper tools, you will be able to create proper codes, quality uh, code that is not just working as an application, but is also um, uh, meeting up with all the standards that uh, you and your team uh, want to achieve. And um, uh, in the end, you as a developer, w once you start to maintain big applications, you will see the benefits of the QA that I just presented. Um, again, um, of all the IDEs I've tried so far, uh, PHP Storm really uh, seems like uh, the best uh, thing around. So I was uh, really happy uh, that I was able to to give it a try and, 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 and just to figure out, okay, how can I develop faster and better? So, yeah. I'm, I'm really convinced right now. Um, well, this is uh, my shameless plug. If you want to contact me, uh, feel free to do so. Um, I'm doing consulting training, especially about QA. And we also provide web, uh, web design. Um, I also want to thank the following people for sharing their creative common pictures, because they will make this presentation a whole lot nicer to look at. Um, thank you. And I will provide uh, the link to, to the source code and to the slides in the tweets. So just follow me at DragonB uh, on Twitter. OK. Thank you, Mike. Maybe Thank you. Some questions? Yeah, we have some questions for you. Thanks, sir, for a very nice presentation. And the, this elephant looks really great. Uh, well, the first question, uh, probably you can make uh, a short overview of some other tools we can use, probably uh, as external tools to PHP Storm connected to via external tools functionality or something like that, or maybe command line tools. Okay. Well, um, as I displayed already in, in, in uh, let me go back, uh, uh, oh. lost it. Uh, if I go back here in the overview of uh, Git, uh, sorry, on Ping, um, it shows you a list of, of uh, all the tools that I'm currently using. Uh, first of all is uh, PHP Lens for syntax checking but also uh, copy-paste detection, uh, which allows me to identify identical um, blocks of codes uh, that have uh, a similarity as though they were copy-pasted and modified just some parameters. Um, uh, I also use uh, pdepend uh, to figure out, OK, what is the the, 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 the performance of my application in a sense? Uh, and do I have too many classes uh, with large methods? Uh, do I have uh, too many lines per method? Uh, and so on. Um, uh, PHP code sniffer for um, ensuring that the source code is uh, validating against uh, the coding standards that we um, uh, said that we're going to follow. Those are the major tools that I'm using. So in the upper right hand side, you will see a list of that. Um, uh, you can have um, even more tools, um, especially uh, PHP Lock, which will be a mix or a summarized version of uh, PHP Depend and PHP um, Mess Detection. Um, and maybe you want to also use uh, PHP uh, Code Browser because it allows you to uh, browse the source code and identify the elements that um, uh, have 
bad coding or are missing some functionality. Hope this answers uh, your questions. Thank you. And there's the next question is, sir, is it normal to unit test controller actions in Zen framework? Um, is it normal to test controller actions in Zen framework? Right. Uh, yes. Uh, this is. Um, if you test, uh, do we have a button uh, on this particular diff? Um, you might want to do some Selenium testing. Uh, don't spend uh, your computation uh, time uh, trying to figure out. Uh, okay, how is my uh, design looking? Uh, well, for instance, if you're using AJAX calls and you want to specify some parameters that you send to uh, your controller, you want to make sure that, for instance, a user is authenticated. If not authenticated, it redirects uh, to the login page. Um, is um, is a file upload working? And uh, those things that those are the items that you want to to test through controller testing. Um, maybe you want to verify uh, response codes if you're building some RESTful um, interfaces on your controller actions. And those are the things that you would test in in your Zen uh, framework controller actions. Um, most of the other things, um, if you use forms, the form of the Zen form object uh, are testable uh, by themselves. Uh, the the models, the mappers, the data gateways um, that you use to uh, facilitate. Uh, um, form submission and, and storage, those can be tested uh, independent from the interaction of your uh, controllers. And in my sense, controller actions should be very slim. They should be on, on the toughest diet there is. Um, um, they should not have too much logic that requires um, extensive testing. So you probably will have a surface uh, service layer or service API that you want to use that will uh, have the business logic for saying, okay, we need to have uh, a, for authentication a username, password, maybe uh, a secondary token. Uh, we can verify this. And if the user is authenticated, okay, we set um, the, the, the token for that user and it returns uh, some, some data back. Uh, to the controller that passes it immediately to uh, your view or something like that. Thank you. And there's the next question. Uh, is it possible to use Finker and mass detection inside PHP Storm within a vagrant with a virtual, virtual box machine? Um, is it possible to use Fing and and mass detection within a virtual machine. Yeah. Yes, it is possible. Um, this is now run on on my source code because the the built XML is part of my source code. If you use uh, uh, virtualization using Vagrant, your source code will be uh, shared with that Vagrant uh, virtual machine. So. If you can run it on your uh, local machine and you have installed Ping and all the tools on your uh, Vagrant machine, uh, you should be able to run it um, identically there as well. And using a, a, a provisioner like Puppet or Chef, it's easy to say, okay, we need to um, yeah, add some, some additional uh, um, dependencies like uh, uh, the PHP unit per package uh, or we're going to use uh, um, mess detection in it, uh, we're going to use ping in it. The only th difference that you will have is that you need to go to the console of that uh, virtual machine and run it there. While uh, in this case, since you're sharing the source code, um, why don't you just run it uh, within your uh, IDE? Thank you. And the next question, 
How do you generate unit tests via the PHP Storm ID? Since PHP Storm 6, there is no real skeleton generator from PHP unit, which automatically generates test classes with methods anymore. Um, do you have any other ways to generate tests inside the ID? Well, um, in my case, that's a bad question because uh, I, I write the test first and um, in, in most cases, you can use PHP units uh, minus minus skeleton to create the, the skeleton base class that you want to test upon. Uh, I, I never used uh, something automated that will generate uh, a, un a PHP unit cl test class for, for testing existing classes. Uh, if you write your tests, the, the tests need to be based upon the functionality that you want to test uh, and not sincerely what is already being written because uh, it could be that the functionality describes uh, procedures 1, um, A, B, C and your class uh, has uh, procedures A, D, Z and therefore your, your class is already wrong but your test should reflect that, uh, that problem and not vice versa. So your test should be matched against uh, yeah, the, the, the procedure or, or the functional description of whatever task that you're doing. And therefore, I don't think that automated generation of uh, test cases based on existing classes is a good thing. But um, yeah, that's my opinion. And if you ask Grumpy Programmer, uh, he probably will tell you the same thing. But I know that some people are saying, no, we want to have automated uh, test generations. Yeah. Thank you. From my side, I would like to add uh, that uh, there is a blog post about a uh, new way of generating uh, PHP unit test classes and methods uh, in uh, our PHP Storm blog. It, uh, it's located at uh, blog, blog at jetbrains.com slash PHP Storm, and you can find it uh, just on the first page and uh, in general in order to uh, have a special helper to generate PHP unit tests you need to go in the project view uh, to new PHP unit PHP unit test and uh, you will have some nice dialog which will help you to uh, make the proper PHP unit test uh, okay thanks uh, the next Michael, uh, question Michael. Yeah. Does it also go vice versa? That I have created a test class and I want to generate a skeleton code mm. class out of it? Mm, well, it actually you can like uh, generate. Uh, well, let me see. Well, it 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 can help you to create uh, some new PHP unit tests are for classes you already have. And uh, it, okay. it will just auto-complete some information for you, but it of course will not uh, like create a full test for you. So you need to make the logic here. Yeah. Okay, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Let's check it out. Yeah, the next one. Mm. What about code reviews? What about code reviews? Um, well, in, in many cases, uh, you can use all the tools that you want, but uh, sometimes uh, you still need to um, you know, open the source code and, and look at uh, what's happening. Uh, we use a tool called Fabricator, uh, which is developed by the Facebook team. Um, um, if you ever get to a PHP conference and see um, Scott McVigar, uh, ask him to give the presentation about uh, Fabricator. Uh, he does a tremendous job uh, about that. Uh, what it allows me to do is, uh, okay, there are a listing of commits, and I can uh, select that commit and start looking at, okay, what, what has been different, um, similar to uh, the history of your SCM. Uh, but one of the nicest features of uh, Fabricator is uh, I can uh, create diffs uh, from one branch uh, to uh, another branch, compare the differences, I can upload it and immediately see, okay, this has been changed, this has been changed. And by looking at it visually, 
I can also detect flaws like um, uh, yeah, code that's uh, being put in comments. Uh, I can detect uh, immediately uh, um, properties that should be stored in config files and, 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 and so on and so on. Uh, but yeah, code reviewing is still a manual process. Um, you can use uh, uh, tools uh, from yeah a whole lot of uh, uh, and businesses. I think Atlassian has one. I think uh, you guys also have uh, this uh, tool. Um, I, I I saw briefly a, a couple of tools on the JetBrains website. Uh, well, uh, it's not about re it's about continuous integration, not not about code reviews. Uh, it's continuous integration. Okay. Uh, well, uh, if you if you want to check out uh, a code review tool, uh, go to Fabricator. Uh, just look it up in, in, in Google. Uh, starts with ph, um, and uh, you will uh, be able to to look at some examples. Uh, it's pretty nifty because it comes uh, along with a whole bunch of other tools. Um, it allows collaboration also with your teammates, so you can look at some codes, invite uh, one of your team members uh, to uh, become a secondary reviewer of that code. Uh, you can start having discussions, you can annotate um, code that you think is going to be, uh, uh, which is uh, suboptimal, you can provide some feedback on that. Uh, you can raise concerns so uh, other people can have a look at it. Uh, you can create tasks uh, from those uh, commits or those differences and and really improve the collaboration within your team. So that's, that's my tool, what I'm doing. Thank you. And the next, the next question is about uh, continuous integration and uh, what tools would you recommend and uh, are... Do you need continuous integration in your project or why you don't need it? Well, continuous integration is basically all the tools that we've seen, and especially the, the, the last part where we already have automated everything with Fing. Continuous integration is the next step. Um, for every commit, it should trigger uh, a, a, a system that will execute everything that you have specified in your thing build file and, and does this automatically and gives you a nice interface to all the report elements. Uh, we use Jenkins. Uh, JetBrains also has a continuous integration system uh, you should lo uh, look at. Um, uh, there are m many tools out there. Uh, look at the tool that best fits your, uh, your needs. Uh, do you need simple uh, reporting? Uh, do you want a complex uh, reporting? Do you need to scale it out over uh, multiple uh, servers? Uh, that sort of things. And and by looking at uh, continuous integration systems um, across uh, the planet, uh, you will be able to identify okay which one uh, will best uh, suit your uh, desires. Thank you. Actually, the PHP Storm ID and other IDs from JetBrains have a very nice integration with different continuous integration solutions. Of course, with our TeamCT continuous integration and our, our continuous integration solutions by other vendors. So feel free to try and it will really help you to automate solution and QA also. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, Mike, at what point do you need to uh, our at what point do you decide that your project needs an entire quality assurance procedure or workflow? Um, at what time? Um, the By the time your application starts to make money is probably a good start uh, starting point. Um, if you have the luxury to start off a project uh, from scratch, um, start doing a QA uh, immediately from the beginning because it will save you a whole, a whole lot of uh, extra effort you need to do um, somewhere in the middle of uh, the project. Um, but um, quality assurance, especially unit testing, I always get the question, uh, I, we need to start doing unit testing, uh, but where do we start? We have this uh, whole bunch of legacy code. 
we don't know where to to begin. Um, ask yourself the question: um, What happens if uh, a particular part of your reputation breaks down? Is the company losing money, or is it not? Uh, will people be uh, suffering? Um, yeah, disconnection. Um, Will uh, they not be able to purchase uh, products on your web application? Will your management not see the latest uh, statistics? Uh, those are the questions you need to ask and, and identify those hotspots in your uh, source code. And by identifying those hotspots in your source code, you can say, okay, we need to focus first on this uh, because if this breaks down, our company will lose money uh, and start working from there. Uh, make sure that you cover that part as quickly as possible with unit testing and, and all the QA uh, things that we talked about. And once you have covered that, um, as you go along in the maintenance and the implementation of new features of that uh, application, you start adding unit testing and, and all the other stuff immediately when you're uh, executing that uh, that task or that uh, feature. Thank you. The next question, could you please comment on the value of using a coding standard? Um, what's the value of a coding standard? Okay, very simple. And if you're a team of developers, um, what you want to present is code that looks as though it's developed by one single developer. Uh, if you work a long time with uh, the same developers, you will notice how they create their classes, how they create their methods, how they uh, define their uh, variable names and so on. Uh, this is okay if it's uh, for fun and, 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 and uh, for pleasure, but if you're serious about application development, uh, your whole team should uh, develop code as though uh, it's a well-oiled machine. Um, it's like having a house style in your company. Um, at the moment that uh, people start implementing their own colors in, in their letterheads and, and whatever, uh, it's not no longer the identity of the company. Thank you. And I think uh, the last question for today. Our PHP unit allows you to check uh, the test code co coverage. It's frequently quite hard to hit uh, 100% there. So what is the level of uh, coverage you consider acceptable for the project, like when thinking about quality assurance and so on? Well, 100% uh, uh, code coverage. Uh, it's not because uh, code is covered by unit test that uh, you have uh, covered all the uh, edge cases. Um, some code needs to be covered three, four, five times. So don't pin yourself down on uh, the code coverage of uh, source code. You do want to have a well-respected amount of uh, coverage, and this lies between the 65 and the 75 percent. Uh, so at least you have an indication of what parts did I already yeah, provide a test for and what parts did I not have tests for. Um, consider the code coverage more as an indicator where you need to write your next test uh, cases for as, uh, oh, we're protected because we have so much percentage of code coverage because that code coverage is only an indicator and it's not going to say, okay, we have 100% code coverage and I will kill, can create you a test that will fail immediately when uh, I figure out, okay, you have tested this, this and this, but you forgot about these edge cases. So um, I'm not going to lie to you. There is no such thing as 100% uh, full coverage of all cases and uh, especially about uh, the code, but um, you should provide it as a guideline. Um, you look at it and you see, okay, we've covered our models, we've covered our um, um, objects, we covered our business logic, but we forgot to cover our forms or 
we forgot to cover our um, service APIs, that kind of stuff. Thank you. We actually have a couple of uh, more questions to ask, but uh, we are running out of time. So we are going to answer these a few questions uh, via email uh, during the next day. So uh, thank you, Michelangelo, for a nice presentation and uh, very interesting questions answer. Uh, well, it was my pleasure to be invited. Thank you uh, for having me. And uh, thank you for uh, having me try out uh, uh, PHP Storm because um, it was because uh, of uh, some uh, people said you need to try it, you need to try it, that I actually start trying it. Otherwise, I never discovered the, the, the benefits of it. So, many thanks to everyone. We are really happy that you have been today with us and that you eventually have tried PHP Storm, and uh, I hope you will use it in the future. So one more thing for today is to share some places where you can, you can get additional information about the product and about upcoming events. So the first one is the uh, home of PHP Storm. It's uh, jetbrains.com slash PHP Storm. Also feel free to follow us in Twitter. It's uh, PHP Storm. If you have any questions sir, about the webinar or about the product or, or marketing of the product or, or something else, feel free to email me at uh, michaelvink at uh, jetbrains.com. And uh, the video, of, the recording of this webinar is going to be available in the beginning of the next week or at the uh, PHP Storm channel on uh, jetbrains.tv. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, I hope that uh, you liked the presentation by Michelangelo and uh, follow us on Twitter in order to uh, get the latest product news and information about new webinars. Thank you. Develop this pleasure.